Hey guys, I want to show you a tool that I made that basically what it does is it keeps anything you play in key to whatever key you're playing in or whatever key you choose. For example, you could use this if you're out playing live and you just are playing a live instrument. And if you actually hit an off note, it'll correct that note to whatever the key that you're playing in. Uh, on top of that, you can actually drop in random MIDI loops and it'll conform those loops into parts that will play in the correct key. So let me give you an idea of, of what I'm talking about here. Basically what I did was I started with a, with a major scale I'll group that and a minor scale. So I'll call this uh, C major and this will be C minor. All right, cool. So basically after that, I duplicate uh, the major 12 times, well, 11 times, so you have a total of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then here, same thing. All right, so for a total of 24, so each one of these you're going to rename to a specified key. So the first one is going to obviously be C. The second one, you move to uh, the next one up, and so forth. The next one is going to go to the next one up. But I took it a step further because if you'll notice here, this only shows sharps and the mixed in key Camelot wheel shows, uh, except for the F sharp, it shows only flats. Okay, so I came over here and I found a, a little tool and I know now that, you know, C sharp is, is D flat and D sharp is E flat. And for those of you that, that know music theory, that should be pretty simple for you. But if not, you know, these tools should work really well. So once that's done, I rename each each file here, or each instance of this uh, scale tool, to the corresponding key. So this basically goes all the way up from C major, and the final one's B major, okay? And then we do the same thing on the minors. The minor scale starts on C, and that, that ends on B as well, okay? So once that's done, you're going to go into this area here, the chain area, and I'm going to click all and, oops, and drag these out just a little bit. Right click and distribute ranges equally. Okay, so now that's going to make a different range. Now I wonder why, oh, let me drag these all the way across and then I'll distribute them. Okay, so that's, that's that step. So each one of these is going to represent a different major key, okay? And as you go, these will represent minor keys as well from 13 on. And as you see here, each section is going to um, represent a certain area in the chain. So what I've done is I've created a different clip for every different keychain. So the first one is unaffected. I'm, I'm actually here. I would go to the uh, MIDI effect rack and then go to chain selector. On the second one, as you can see, I have moved the chain selector up to match a number that corresponds 
for example, here, C major is somewhere between 0 and 8. And this is somewhere between 10 and 14 or something, and so forth. So you need to know what each one of these are, and then move each corresponding clip to the, the right area. And that's what I've done in, in here, all the way up to uh, through the majors and the minors, OK? I know it's a little tricky, but it's doable. It took me a little bit of time to do this, for sure. So what I've done uh, to make it easier is I made one that goes in order of key, and I've got, got another one that goes in order of number, as you would see here on the Camelot scale. So going from 1B to 12B, so these are all the majors, and 1A to uh, 12A are all the minor keys. So now, once you've done that, there's a couple things that you could do. One, you could just uh, hit this, and if you've got both of these selected, by the way, both of these were not meant to be selected at the same time. I just made both, both of these so that you could choose which one works for you. If you're playing with a band and they say, hey, we're playing in F major, you could click on there and, and then you could use this routing. And then anything you play, is gonna be in, um, in F sharp major or whichever one you choose. So now, any key you play on the keyboard is going to uh, correspond to that key, so you won't hit a wrong note. That's me just running up two octaves. Um, and basically, if you hit a wrong note, it just it shifts it to the next correct note. So that's a very cool thing. And then for, uh, for DJs who either want to play along live or kind of uh, use MIDI loops on the fly, let me show you a little bit uh, about how that works. So I'm going to um, shift over. It's important that if you're playing into this live that you have both of these armed, whichever one of these you choose. And this here, this is where you're going to put your MIDI loops. And these receive the MIDI loops here. And then that gets fed uh, out the master. So this is where all the correction happens. OK, so let me show you how this works with loops. So I've got a bunch of random loops here. They're not even necessarily in correct keys or anything. In fact, I'll, I'll just make one right here in front of you just to show there's really no rhyme or reason. Okay, so here's our, our part, and I'm going to go ahead and play it right here. Okay, and that's just running through an operator instrument and a little delay to make it a little more interesting. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this over into our group, my, my little tool here. And this is gonna send these notes through here, correct the scales, and then send it out correctly. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'm gonna play this uh, song at 4B. And, and I'll go ahead and play this. As you can see, it's completely conformed to that track. We'll go ahead and play it with 5B, which also works. And it'll work with 3B as well. And it'll work with 4A, the minor.
let me drag some of these other random parts over and I'll just play these different parts just to show you that everything's going to work. Okay, let's go ahead and try a, another track here. So I'll, uh, I'll select a 7A here. And play some different parts. And I'll play uh, the, the different keys that work well. Here. And 7B. So there you go. Taking a uh, random ideas and conforming them to key and um, you can either play loops or you can actually play live keyboard either way it's going to uh, work great for you let me uh, go ahead and show you I've got it on 7b so that should be fine so I'll play the major version of this and I'll just uh, I'll just hit some notes on the keyboard make sure when you do this that both of these are armed all right and here we go. All right, so I'm not the best player, but as you can see, it stays in key uh, pretty well. So I will have this available on my products page, or um, you can feel free to, to build this yourself using this video. So I just want to show you how to set this up real quick. So you're going to put this in, you know, whatever folder, and you're going to find it in your browser. And open it up, you're going to drag the ALS file over. It's going to create three MIDI tracks, and then depending on how you want to uh, how how you want these ordered, whether in order of key or in order of number, uh, you you would select this and arm that track, and and then hit Command and arm your MIDI loops track. And then all you're going to do is just drag in whatever synth or effects chain that you want into the scales key track of your choice and you're good to go. Anything that you play there will be fed through this synth and your, uh, and your effects. So yeah, you're not going to put the synth on this track here. You're just gonna enter in your, your MIDI notes on this one. I mean, technically you could enter your notes here, but best for you to keep this clean. All right, guys, so enjoy that.